Good morning, viewers. Welcome back to my channel. Let us solve the following problem. The first one here says, what are the names and readings of these instruments? What are the names and readings of these instruments? The instrument by my left here is called the micrometer screw gauge. And the one by my right here is called the vernier caliper. So the micrometer screw gauge here can be used to measure balls of very small diameter. While the one by my right here, the vernier caliper, can be used to measure balls of a smaller diameter as well, do the measure diameters that are bigger than that of the micrometer screw gauge. And they have the ability to measure the internal and external diameter of a cylinder. So that is what makes the difference. So the vernier caliper can measure internal and external diameter of, of a cylinder. Let us go up so we see other examples of how the micrometer screw gauge looks like. So this other picture is clearer. And look at the graduations. This other side here by my left is called the main scale. And the one by my right here is the vernier scale. If I want to take reading from this very instrument, may looking at this, I'm seeing this graduation. This is zero here, and this is five, meaning that this other uh, graduation here, this one is one, this is two, three, four, five. Okay, so if you look below, you see other ones, other graduations below here. So telling you that. After zero, you have 0 0.5, then 1, 1.5, 1 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5, 6, 6.5, 7, 7.5. Okay, so I just come here and then I write down 7 7.5. You don't just write. 7.5 or 7.50, then plus, you look at the vernier scale, the graduation that will correspond to this horizontal line you are seeing here on the main scale, that's where you pick the reading. So here I'm seeing 20, this one here is 25. So it means we have here, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And you now see that where we have 22, this 20, 21, 22 coincides with the horizontal line on the main scale. So you will come here and write 0 0.22. So if we add the two together, we would have 7.22. 7, 2. So that is the reading of that particular micrometer screw gate. It's 5, 2, it's okay. okay. All right. Let's look at this one here. This is 5, 5.56, 6.57, 7.5. I think this is 7.50 plus. You come here to the vernier square. Take the point that corresponds with this horizontal line on the main square. So this is 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. You take it as 0.24. I didn't put units here. This one should be in millimeter. So this would be seven 
0.74 millimeters. So that's the reading of that very instrument. Look at this one. This is 0, 0 0.5. 1, 1, 5, 5, 2, 2, 5, 5, 5, 3, 3, 5, 5, 4, 4, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. Just put here 5.50 5, 5, plus. And now look at here we have 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. This is supposed to be exactly on this, but since it is not, let me just take this 35, 36. Zero point three six. Okay, so this would be five point eight. Six five point six millimeters. Yeah, we have fifteen, then twenty, twenty one, twenty two. It's already written here. So this is twenty two point. Now come here. This one is 30, 31, 32, 33 coincides with the horizontal line that so you write here at 22.33 millimeters. So you do the same thing. This figure, I don't need to waste time here. Let's come down here. What are the names and readings of this instrument? So this one is a bit clearer. Here we have. 0, 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5. 5, 5. So we have 5 point. Let me still go up. Five point five zero plus the 30 here coincides with this, so just take this as 0 0.30. So that will give us 5.80 millimeters. So that's the answer to that very question. Let's take the next question. This one says, the sum of all microscopic form of energy is called, the sum of all microscopic form of energy is called total energy, phase energy, system energy, internal energy. Sum of all microscopic energy is called internal energy. Look at the hint. Internal energy include energy in a microscopic scale. So I read further. It is the sum of all the microscopic energies such as translational kinetic energy, vibrational, vibrational and rotational kinetic energy, potential energy from intermolecular forces. So the best option for that question is option D. Let's go to the next one. Which of the following is a property of a system? Which of the following is a property of a system? Of pressure, temperature, internal energy, volume, pressure, and all of that. Before we answer this question, I would like us to check the following properties of a thermodynamic body. So we have 
chemical potential, compressibility density, enthalpy. We have Gibbs free energy, heat capacity, thermal free energy. We have internal energy here. Mass. I'm seeing pressure here. So I've seen internal energy, pressure, temperature, thermal conductivity, volume. So volume, temperature, pressure, internal energy, internal energy. Let's go back to our question. Which of the following is a property of a system? Pressure is a property. Temperature is a property. So this is correct. Internal energy is a property. So this is correct. Volume and pressure are properties. All of this. So we saw all of this. So that's the correct option. Let's go to the next question. Entropy change depends on, entropy change depends on, heat transfer. Let us look at this problem. It says one gram of water which is one cm cube becomes one six seven one cm cube of steam when boiled at a constant pressure of this amount. The heat of vaporization at this pressure is two point two five six times ten to the power six kilowatts per kilogram. From here, calculate the work done by the water when it vaporizes. This is a formula for work done. W equals to P change in V. So that will really help us. But before we continue, we have to highlight the quantity given to us. And from the quantity that we have, we should be able to solve the following problem. Okay, so let us go to the board. Okay. So we have here one gram of water. That is water or mass of water. And this is mass of water equals to one gram. Uh -oh. One gram of water, one cm cube, that is the first volume. So we'll take this as V1 equals to one cm cube becomes 1671 cm cube of steam. So V2, second volume, 1671 cm cube of steam. When boiled at a constant pressure, P. of 1.013 times 10 to the power 5 Pascal. OK, the heat of vaporization at this pressure is the heat. 
Latin heat of vaporization, VLV, is 2.256 times 10 to power 6 Jewels per kilogram. So this is 10 to power, not let me confuse the bar. Let me write it one. One and zero. Okay, so those are the quantities given to us. So from here, we should be able to solve the following problem. Now, before we continue, there are some conditions we are going to make. Like, we cannot use this gram, so we'll convert from this gram to kilogram. What would we do? Divide this by 1,000. So that will give us 10 to power minus 3 in kilogram. Okay, so... We also convert cm cube to meters cube by dividing by 1,000. So this would give us 1 times 10 to the power minus 3 in meters. So you convert this also by dividing by 1,000. So this will give us 1671 times 10 to the power minus 3 in meters. So I have done all the necessary conversion. This one was in gram. When this one is in kilogram, so it will not align. So you have to convert all these ones so that it should align with the unit we have before you solve it. If you solve it directly, you will still see an option that you will tick, but it's not the correct option. So by converting it, I think you have taken the right step. So let's move down to the formula. We use formula for work work equals to P change in V. Change in V means V2 minus V1. So this is P into V2 minus V1. So the work done that will you equals to what is P here? In place of this P, you are going to substitute this value 1.013 times 10 to the power 5. into V2 minus V1, what is V2? 1671 times 10 to the power minus three. 1671 times 10 to the power minus three, then minus What's our V1? 1 times 10 to the power minus 3. 1 times 10 to the power minus 3. Okay, so from here we have to simplify. When we simplify, we will get this. Uh, 
times 10 to the power 5. I just repeated what was there. Then this one would be times 1, 6, 70 times 10 to the power minus 6. So one six seven one minus one, we get this, and this one is minus three, minus three, which will give you minus six. Okay, so this is how I got this value. Let me still put it inside the bracket. Yeah. All right. So when you multiply this, these two values, you will get w equals to one six nine jowls. Okay, so that's for the first question there. So if we look at the options here, A, B, C, and D, I think the best option is Okay, so you can try it and see. Then the next one said, calculate the heat added to the water. Calculate the heat added to the water. We are going to use Q equals to ML. We had L in that question and we had M. So let's apply this. Let me copy what you say. Okay, so it says calculate the heat added to the water. The heat, Q, equals to ML, call it MLB. Okay, so the M we got was one gram of water one gram of water, which we divided by 1,000, and we got 10 to the power minus 3. So we're going to multiply this value by the L, the value for L, which was 2.256. Two point two five six times ten to the power six ten to the power six. Okay, so when you estimate this value, it will give you. Two, two, five, six joules of energy. Let's go to the next question. So before we go to the next question, this is our answer here. So two, two, five, six. All right. This one says, find the increase in internal energy. You use this formula, increase in internal energy. Use this formula. So let me copy this. And the increase in internal energy. Okay, so for us to find the internal energy from what we have, the quantities that were given to us, the best formula we should use is change in U is equals to Q minus W. Then we have initially solved for 
W, the walk, and we got 169. 169 joules of energy. So the Q here is 2256. So to find the increase in internal energy, that would be the difference of these two here. So this would be two, two, five, six, minus W, one, six, nine. So when you subtract this, you would get 20, 87, so that's the answer to that question. Let's quickly move to the options. Let's check what we have got and if it is correct. So this is the correct answer. All right, 17 says, a small compact car with mass of 1,000 kilogram is traveling due north with a speed of 15 meters per second. What is the linear momentum? Linear momentum is product of mass and velocity. That's formula for momentum. So the mass has been given in this question and the velocity is given as well. So if we multiply the values we we get or if we substitute those values into like the mass here is 1,000 times 1, the velocity, 15 meters per second. That would give us 1,500, One, two, three, four. Call it one point five times ten to four. Oh, the unit kilogram meters. Okay, so this is the answer. Oh no, that's not the answer. This one comes with a negative sign. So what we have here is positive. So I've seen a positive value here. That is the correct answer. So we had this one, two, three, four. We now converted it to standard form. So you have to, to master your conversion in standard form as well. Okay, let's look at the next question here. In an elastic collision, all of these properties cool except I. No energy is gained and no energy is lost. Energies are conserved. Energies are conserved in an elastic collision. Energy gain is equal to energy lost. Particles remain in constant motion. Velocities of the system are equal. Velocities of 
the system uh, before. Right? I would prefer this option. Hint. Initial and final velocities are the same. So in in an elastic collision, the initial and final velocities are the same and the kinetic energy of the system is conserved. So I'm comfortable with conserved, kinetic energies are conserved and the velocities are the same. So I prefer option D. Question 19 says, the quantity that describes how fast an object in motion is moving and its magnitude is, the quantity that describes how fast an object in motion, anyway, I would go with velocity. Speed and velocity describes how fast the object in motion is. Question 19. Okay, so let's go to the next question here. This one says, the velocity, oh sorry, the vector sum of forces acting on a particle is equal to the rate of change of momentum of the particles is stated by principles of the vector sum of forces acting on a particle is equal to the rate of change of momentum of the particles is stated by principles of conservation of the correct answer to this question is option D. We have conservation of energy. Conservation of energy has nothing to do with sum of forces. In a given of flow system, the total amount of energy is always constant, or the energy can be converted from one form to another. That's the law of conservation of energy. The law of conservation of mass. No one states that the mass of an isolated system can neither be created nor destroyed or can be transformed from one form to another. In terms of kinetic energy, law of conservation of kinetic energy, we say that kinetic energy cannot be created or destroyed or can be con or transformed from one form to another. But the linear momentum here has to do with forces. Total momentum of a system is conserved if no external force acts on the system. So I would, I would rather choose option D. I would choose option D. Let me take the last one. Any event in which two or more bodies or particles exert forces on each other in a relatively short time is called any event in which two or more bodies or particles exert forces on each other in a relatively short time is called collision. When two bodies collide, they, they initiate forces on each other. This one is motion of diffusion. None of this. I prefer option A. That's how far I can go for today's class. I believe you enjoyed our video. Please, if you did, don't hesitate to click on the subscribe button and also click on the notification button. So anytime we upload our post, you would, you would be notified. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Bye.